I'll give you a clue. It was Greensby. They are pressing quite well. What's happened there? Are you gotta be joking? Oh, sorry, I've done the wrong around. I've done an arrow. I haven't seen it. Sorry. He must have a horse up his ass. <laughs> if we're playing on professional and that's happening for Barcelona. Um, uh, two years ago. Sorry about that. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that, I'm sorry, that's just put me off the game. I'm not having that. Anyway, segue, moving on. What has that got to do with football? Why is that out of football ground? Hello and welcome along to another ramble from the Honest Football Podcast, where we bring honesty back to the beautiful game. My name's Daniel Cody and with me as always are Charlie Betts and Craig Savage. What's on the show this week, Craig? Coming up, we're reviewing our non-league Father's Day experience, SC Paderborn, any other business, and unofficially Noah Pamero's name the match they squad. So, how's your week been, guys? Uh, interesting. Go on. Slightly interesting. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit later about our trip to Wembley mm-hmm. for the FA Vars and Trophy final. And obviously, I like to stop my intros with food. So, uh, I'm just going to complain about the food prices. Oh, that's Oh, yes. And, yes. and to be fair, the quality of the food as well. Oh, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't all that. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, Craig. £7.20 for a sausage and chips. Well, it was, supposed, it was supposed to be saveloy chips, but then they ran out of saveloys wherever it was. <laughs> and so just saw Cumberland sausage. You could have counted the chips. There was about 15 chips, I think. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest chips. Another. I just got KFC chips. Just for me, the issue being, if you know you've got people there for two games, and really, I mean, we were in there for the best part of six and seven hours. You've got to reduce the prices a bit. I it mean, didn't it feel was, like six, seven hours. I mean, I, I thought ahead, brought in a, a, a rucksack, no rucksack, like draw, <laughs> a drawstring bag, sorry, with uh, some rucksack. sandwiches from the local co-op. But even then, I was a bit like, I mean, how much did the Coke as well? Uh, £3.20 for a bottle of drink. I think ridiculous. it was £5 something for a Budweiser. Which is ridiculous. So, a little bit strange. And obviously, you have to be able to drink, so it's a bit strange. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I just think they can do so much better than that. And, you know, if you've got people there for two games, you've got to reduce it a bit. We get cup holders, and I can't bring my beer forward. Well, no, the seats are really good, in the sense of they were padded, and they did have a cup holder, but I was yeah, but too, too tight to pay for a drink to put in there. I mean, I was I was more excited about the cup holder than the occasion. <laughs> which was absolutely <laughs> good. No, it's a shame, because Wembley's a lovely ground. But the good side of that is we did get to go through the club when we did. Which was lovely. There were some beautiful parts there. Lovely bar. Love, love the touch of the football tables on the way through. Table football. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Brilliant, which Very you good. Free to play. Lovely. And also, Craig, as well as the Savaloy and chips minus the Savaloy, yes. you had something else there as well, didn't you? Yeah, I, uh, there was a Krispy Kreme... Donuts. Other, well, other donut like, retailers are available. Other donut retailers are available, but there was also a waffle stand next door and ice cream. And you got how many donuts? Uh, uh, three. And if you want me, don't want me asking how much were the three donuts? Um, four, five, four, five quid. Uh, they were five pound exactly for three donuts. Yeah. Uh, eight mini donuts, four pound fifty, and a waffle with a scoop of ice cream, six pound fifty, which put me off. I've so, just got to be honest. Like, if, it, if you're there for the one game, I'm not saying that's okay. But you can probably get by them without eating. I think, they, 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 for me, they take the piss out of the, the honest football fan. Boys, and and I'm gonna, I am going to sound like the grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say honest football. No, because no, it's going to be proper fans who are going to watch not being the long, non league well, finals day. It's not going to be glory hunters. It's not going to be people who are okay, just here for, yeah. happen to be in London and they'll catch a game. It's going to be proper honest, football fans. To be honest. This is the FA. Just, just cut them a bit of slack for crying out loud. To be you honest, know? why would... A non league finals day have roast pork shoulder. Well, this was my next point, and I didn't want to sound like the granddad of football, but thank you for getting there before me. Is there were no burgers, hot no, dogs, no, basic no. standards available. To my knowledge, you couldn't buy a portion of chips on their own. No, you cannot. You could only buy. No, it was really set. It was really set up as a, like cotton chips or several chips. So if you're a vegetarian, you then can't eat either of them, or you can't have chips because they already had fish or sausage on them, yep. which is strange. And then, as you say, the other options were pulled pork soldier and uh, pulled pork. Right, right shoulder, shoulder and yeah yeah you're saving my words here mm-hmm. and beef chilli if I remember rightly was it chilli con gato no it wasn't chilli con gato something like that something and ridiculous. all around the seven, pri- seven pound price mark so absolutely sort out other than that we'll talk about the games afterwards because they redeem the rest of the day and a lovely cheap McDonald's before it <laughs> oh, what about the programme well let's no, not <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for Ramble of the Week. And we're going to carry on what we talk about from non-league finals day at Wembley. We watched two games, the FA Vars final between Chertsey Town and Craig Valley. Paper Mills. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Paper Mills. 
What a fantastic game of football. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, we'll go through the other game. Of the two games, clearly, and by far away, the more exciting of the two. You know, Probably the, the perfect advert for lower non-league yeah. football. It was absolutely fantastic. End to end, the last, obviously, we can give it away now, it went to extra time. Yes. yes. The last five minutes, stoppage time of the 90 minutes. Unbelievable. Absolutely crazy. Incredible. Probably two clear-cut chances at both ends. The yeah. last the kick last of the kick of the game hit the crossbar and bounced yeah, out. That's yeah. right, yeah. One of the ones before that, the keeper nearly threw one in his own net. The and they had another clear-cut chance. Yeah, as I say, was it the centre-half who sort of was at fault for the first goal for Cray Valley, then had about... a what, seven yards away from goal, blazed over the bars, the ball Oh, across. yeah, the ball came cross back. But going back to the beginning, it. for me, like, you know, fantastic occasion for those lads to be playing at that. No, some notable people, Ke- um, Kevin Lisby playing for Cray Valley Paper Mills, and also Gavin Tomlin, yeah. who scored the first goal. But to, to be honest, I don't know what you thought, for the first half, Cray Valley were more than good for a... Chertsey a, started well, and then Cray Valley got into the game, and also they took kept, the lead. I mean, Cray Valley kept the ball so well for that first 45 minutes. An However, start. we all noticed their Achilles heel, and they were lucky for a few times in that first half, because they couldn't defend set pieces to save their life. And lo and behold, Chertsey, just before the stroke of half-time, got an equaliser through. Well, not, a, not, a point, after, not long after Cray Valley yeah, scored. Yeah, but so. what I mean is, it's just like, I think we... If they'd have gone in at 1 0, you know, different game, but Cray Valley at the first half blew them yeah, away. They, just couldn't, they couldn't defend set pieces. One they? of the things we do have to say about Cray Valley is they had a lot of experience in attack, as yeah, we just yeah. mentioned with those two. Yeah. Is, it did look like they were a little leggy towards the end. They yeah. weren't keeping the ball as well. I suppose on a massive pitch like mm. Wembley, when you're used to playing at oh, sort the, of the, recreation the centres, yeah. not going to be as high as I was slightly surprised because later on, the manager, I'm not I'm in the business of slagging off, obviously, done a fantastic job to get in there. I think he took off the wrong striker. Yeah, Gavin Tomlin and Kevin Lisby, both, you know, a bit older, a bit more experienced. I thought Kevin Lisby still looked like he had a bit more in him and a bit more threatening than Gavin Tomlin. It I mean, there's one point we that ball. Know. Well, yeah, I know, but there's one point the ball got over, knocked over the top of that Gavin Tomlin, and he just he couldn't even run. Could he? Literally, at one point he was, yeah. all, he was almost limping. Mm. And I think if he kept living, kept sorry, kept Kevin Lisby on there, they just looked like they had a little bit more about him. And then once he took him off, it almost like playing for ten minutes felt like after that. But yeah, yeah. But then uh, obviously he got to extra time. There was a penalty. Mm. Right on the stroke of half time, of that uh, yeah. of extra time, Cody thought it wasn't a penalty. I thought it was, but we haven't actually seen that. So we're not arguing point. with the the foul. We're mm. arguing with whether it was inside the or outside or the, the, the line of the box. I've seen it back, Craig. It is. It's very close. It's very I haven't close. seen it yet. So I still I think the initial touch is outside. Yeah. It's one of those where the contact carries on. Yes. Yeah. So. You can't blame the referee. It's a, again, it's a step five referee as well as I step five. I don't think five. it's yeah. a step five referee. Was it I think, no, I've got to say, so. for me, the one thing I love about this game in general was that both teams, we said it at the time, both teams just went, went for it. it. Went hell for them. Like, you know, finals can often be the, one of the worst games you'll see because they're quite tensive, they're quite nervous about it, but those two just went at it, hammer and tongs. It was and a brilliant game of football. One thing that we, we have to end that Vars final on is the final goal at the end of Stockholm. Oh, brilliant. Um, it's brilliant. one of the... The I, best I, goals I I've you... ever seen in non-league football. And in a final on that occasion, yeah. Quincy Rowe, <laughs> Chelsea Town centre-half, what a legend. I did say he was playing well that game. He had a great game. He, he, he had a great didn't game. didn't believe me, but he had an excellent game. And obviously, the, the both well, sets of fans... I'll just say we did believe you, because we both said it too. <laughs> <laughs> both sets of fans. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea were well supported. Fantastic support from Chelsea. 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 And although Chelsea were well supported... A lot of the Cray Valley fans stayed back for the second mm. game, which not many of the church well, fans did. Well, while we talk about fans, there's something I did want to raise, and I know we spoke about it on the day, is we bought tickets for the neutral zone, didn't we? As in, really didn't matter who you supported, just like us, you were going there to watch the football, okay? Didn't really care who won or not. I don't know how about you, but I felt like we were surrounded by Chertsey fans in the neutral zone. I thought, in the first game we did, yes. This is meant to be neutral. neutral. The same in the second and then right? exactly. we then went into the, the FA Trophy, we're obviously Leighton Orient and Fylde, and we were mobbed by Leighton Orient fans in the neutral zone. So, it's like, this is meant to be neutral. <laughs> it's one genuine point oh. for the ticketing system for the FA, because you can obviously buy them from February. Yeah. But when the teams get through to the final, their allocation goes on sale like a couple of days mm. later or whatever. So those teams in the meantime, if you're a fan and you want to make sure you get a ticket, so say Leighton Orient, mm. you were likely to set out their allocation, the first thing you're going to do is, well, I can buy a ticket in the neutral yeah. now, make sure yeah. I get a ticket. But how would they know? Yeah, no. How would they know? But no, but I mean, as but, soon as they, as soon as they well, guarantee they, oh, yeah, the yeah, final, yeah, yeah, yeah. their yeah. ticket allocation wouldn't go on sale for two or three So days, it, in so. a nutshell, the, the neutral zone wasn't very neutral. <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely nutshell, that is. But, but, very good few. Yeah, and, Chelsea uh, had a good support, but disappointingly, after the game, they actually, all of them, I mean, there was, there was a handful of Chelsea honest, fans uh, there. What, 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 uh, just during the game, where... The Chelsea fans, the Cray Valley fans, were both singing songs. Yeah, yeah, that was quite good. What annoyed me is the stewards got involved and they moved the, the Cray Valley fans away. There, there was no mm-hmm. trouble. 
Oh, it's no not singing banner, yeah, but like Stewie's sort of that. So I know you're supposed to be one of the best Stewies like around, but for yeah. fuck's sake, just let them have fun. It's their it's day out. Great banner, it? banner, banner, like you're going to school. You've got school in the morning, and yeah. And, uh, <laughs> But no, brilliant. But I've got to say, Cray, Cray Valley stayed on for the second game. And yes, I, I will say, because of Lane on having such a big allocation, there were quite a few, not obviously thousands of thousands, but there was a few people in there, particularly for extra time, Lane Orient fans, so Started it was a much bigger yeah. crowd for them yeah, to absolutely. finish off the game. And a really, really brilliant game of football. It's the most important mm. thing we have to highlight. Yeah. You could, yeah. End to end. Really. You could certainly see why both sides have won the league this yeah. year. Yes. Definitely, definitely. On to the second game. FA Trophy final between Which I've got to say, and AFC Fylde. The extra time is a bit of a blessing because otherwise we had two hours to kill. So that whole thing of extra time and then lifting a trophy, that... There was only then about 45 minutes between the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great. Um, but yeah, another... Yeah. It, I, I obviously wasn't as exciting. A bit more of a tactical sort of... But a good game. Football. Oh, yeah, good definitely. Football. Yeah. Um, Fylde should have been free up before Fylde, half time. Uh, let's be honest with the first half. Fylde... Dominated. Yeah, they were much better. Leighton Orient looked like they hadn't played for two weeks, which mm-hmm. they hadn't. Yeah. And Fylde looked like they had revenge to get. I said it. The no, I said, said, said yeah. they will come back because they disappointed you themselves. You nearly got two scores because you. Chelsea, I, I was the one who yeah, you said three run. One. I was praising Craig on Sunday. You, it was me. You said three one. Three one. <laughs> I said two nil five. And nearly had two nil five. Yeah, but they should have been three up in the first half. But then know. the last twenty minutes or so, Fylde's dropped back as you so often. Well, before let's say before before the last twenty minutes. What a free kick by Danny Rowe. I've got to say... Unbelievable free kick. As as I profess on here, I don't know a lot about non-league football. I don't watch loads of it because I don't have BT, etc. However, I have heard a bit of a hype about that Danny Rowe, but I've got to say he is, he is far, far better than most of those players on that pitch. Class footballer. Very and nice. also, I can't remember his first name now, but Norton, he ended up getting mad in the match and he was brilliant John for... No. Five. Yeah, in centre midfield yeah he, he yes. had a brilliant game Very everything good. went through him Very good. Good. but I think you were, you were bang on about that Danny Rowe because he's quite a big lad and you know he's quite a, a, a well built fellow I think people make the assumption that he should be like a target man but actually that it was dropping in a bit like I suppose I know it's a much lower yeah. level but a bit like a Wayne Rooney yeah and and he was so up. dangerous in that that space just behind the centre forward he's incredible if in you there. see his goals like on YouTube and that uh, he scores he scores all sorts of yeah. goals and he's his link up play there were so many times yeah. like there's so many link up he's not just a good strike he's just class football like yeah that. yeah and his free kick was fantastic but on the flip side of that then Leighton already come out with the second half a bit more well, yeah, gusto yeah, yeah. is that the right word I so your good. your legendary striker Matt Harrell came on <laughs> who you professed to make the difference about the game and he certainly did Charlie didn't he <laughs> what because happened because he won it for five and how did he do well, that no, to be fair Leighton already hit the post three times yes yeah. they did, they did. Well, Matt, Matt Harrell he's been around a bit to be honest it's only because he had a you know I always used to get him on feet he was, really well, he was always a decent sign on there but he um, yeah I can't remember exactly but didn't the ball spill out from a save that the goalkeeper no, made no they hit the post oh they hit the post sorry yeah. and basically the keeper's gone to die to get it that's it and it was an open goal I can't say which lane or player hit it but they've hit it towards the goal and that Matt Harold, who's on the line tried to jump out of the way of it and jumped into the shot and was therefore offside because obviously yes. he was the and, and denied a goal and denied a <laughs> goal which would have taken that to extra and time and off the back of that two days later up, signs a new contract <laughs> he's got renewed a contract I think that's a great game yeah, yeah, no, he's good. He, he, he didn't have a great game I'll be honest he's woeful in that final he's a good target man to be able to throw on Jeremy. yeah yeah but um, AFC Fylde totally deserved to win it yeah. they're the first side ever to win the Vars and the Trophy oh yeah right okay brilliant start well done yeah but obviously they weren't when they won the Vars before that but quite you know quite well supported as well given the the fact that they'd already been to Wembley. So there were over 20,000 late Orient fans. Fylde yeah. had a, a five or 6,000, I yeah, think, so which was 42, more than 42,000 yeah, yeah. in total for both for the games. Four teams, yes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. a really good attendance for the two games. A great idea to have them on the same day. Absolutely. I Absolutely. guess for us, the most important thing is... Did we enjoy it? Did we enjoy it? What was the day like? And will we recommend it to other people? Absolutely, 100% yes. Yeah. I, no, I think it's something we should do yearly, definitely. I think yeah. it's a brilliant thing. A great advert for, the fo- uh, for, the, for non-league football, sorry. And that, that first final will take some beating for me. And that, that was an incredible game of football. We've got to say, for all that we've slagged off the food and things mm. like that, if you get your own food beforehand and make sure you've got plenty of food yeah. and drink if you can get the right, sort of, in the right packaging, <laughs> it is a really good value oh, day in brilliant. terms of the yeah. ticket value. 25 yeah. quid for two good games of football. You'll see a big National League side like Maitland yeah. Orient potentially. Next year we could have a Notts County, you never know. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely, yeah. I just hope, um, we have, I haven't seen it back on BT Sport, but I hope they done the coverage well for the Vars game I think so. it looked like they had oh, you know, to be fair the last four or five uh, three or four years sorry, I've watched it they've always done the coverage yeah. brilliantly so. but no I oh, think we, we, we should... forgot to mention we was actually on the big screen yeah we, we were on the big screen when we were one of only four groups of people in the stadium <laughs> 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 hey but they noticed us they didn't bring on the but, uh, yeah no I, I would t-shirts. genuinely genuinely encourage you know anyone and everyone to go and watch it and actually it, it almost inspired me like we I know we've mentioned before about maybe trying to 
every fortnight catch a, a non-league game so I was there at ground probably thing and actually watching something like that it does inspire you because the excitement particularly that first final because it's probably a bit more relatable to people of our standards what the FA Vars we played that stand yeah yeah to watch that fans. and just see how you know two teams just going at it you know in an unbelievable final it, it does inspire you to get involved in non-league football a bit more do you know so yeah definitely <laughs> Okay, and the next story, I want to keep the positive vibe by moving mm. to Germany. Go. And I want to talk about a club that you may or may not have heard of, depending on how much you like German football. You obviously know I'm quite a big fan of it. It's SC Paderborn. Zero oh, seven. I've heard of them. Yes. Paderborn. 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 Right. Paderborn. Okay. SC. So, Tell me more. There's quite an interesting story going on with them. It's one of probably the most strange seasons, or strange runs they've had in right. recent years. Like... So, in 2013-14, for the first time, Craig, they got promoted to the first tier of uh, German football, the Bundesliga. You sure it's the first tier? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I nearly said English football. Yeah. That was the mistake I made. It was the country I was going for. <laughs> Unfortunately, like so many smaller clubs trying to make it in the top tier of these elite competitions, they did get relegated at the first attempt. But what happened after that was quite interesting. In the second tier, the following year... Right. They got relegated again. Oh no! 2015-16. Oh, no. It's like Portsmouth. You said this was a positive story. It is, Where is because the positive things story? start to get really interesting the following season. 2016-17, they finished in the third tier of German football, 18th, and got relegated again. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And they were preparing for life in the non-professional German regional divisions, the fourth tier of German football. Then they have like a 20,000 seat stadium. They have a 15,000 seat oh, stadium that's that was relatively new. However, they didn't ever end up playing in that regional division. Why is that? Because one of the former big boys of German football, 1860 Munich, mm -hmm. who had obviously previously played at the Olympic Stadium, had been a top-tier club and then a second-tier club for a long time, failed to get a licence to go in the professional league. Oh, I've heard about this, yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. It's been huge. So that's, yeah. another, that's another big story on its own, but we're not going to go into that today. They got demoted from the second tier of German football down to the non-professional fourth tier. Incredible. So yeah. since they, then... They used to play in Allianz Arena. <clears throat> Uh, not sure. Probably not now, but they, they were a huge team. But interestingly, they, they're they on the feel-good story as well, and they may well be my next one in two years' time, as they got promoted back to the third tier too. But Paderborn were given a reprieve. Right. Summer 2017, preparing for life in the fourth tier, non-professional league, and suddenly they've got a reprieve. They're back in the third tier. Yep. 1860 Munich are down there. They survived. They appoint a new manager. And what happens in the 2017-18 season? They don't get promoted, do they? They finish second and get promoted wow. to the second tier of German football. Right. Yeah, you get lucky, don't you? So 2018-19, last season, they're back in the second tier of German football. What happens just a couple of weeks ago? They get promoted. Promoted in second place and what? they next year will be back in the Bundesliga. <laughs> so technically, they had three relegations in three years and three promotions in two years, which is absolutely <laughs> remarkable. But They are the... German version of Luton Town. <laughs> Essentially, but even more dramatic. To imagine that, like, you finished in yeah. that place to be relegated three years in a row and then finished in the promotion places two years in a row. They had a manager take over in the summer of 2017 as their uprising started. So, Stefan, ap apologies for the pronunciation in advance, Baumgart, I believe it is. Oh, yeah, right? I know him. Took over, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> Took over in the summer of 2017 and has led them to successive second place finishes and successive promotions. And they will be back in a German top tier next season. Is it? Do you think we could adopt them as our German team as a podcast? Uh, quite possibly. But it's not quite as unique as you may think in Germany because it's happened quite a few times right. in recent years. So we've had a, a lot of talk about two smaller clubs that have come up in recent years, which were Ingolstadt and Darmstadt. Yeah. Darmstadt got two successive promotions themselves to get up there and came from the fourth tier, the regional leagues, in a period of five years. So they had two settling years in the third league and then got yeah. promoted twice in a row. So it's actually becoming quite a regular mm. thing in German football. And it's great for... You talk about English where the top six are so settled that in a league yeah. like that, you can go up two, three divisions. You can go yeah, from a regional definitely. league to the Premier League. It would be like, I guess, the likes of Fleetwood and Salford mm. and Fylde and that that we've mentioned from them to be able to go from the regional leagues all the way to the yeah, top exactly. in England albeit there's a lot more than three tiers in a way yeah but, but still just look, just I think we should the, drop them as a, that we should be is it SC Paderborn SC Paderborn SC and the Paderborn. there are the Bundesliga team for next year they literally got promoted by uh, by five goals Yes. Five goals. Yes. Five goals. Level on points by Level five point goals for Union Berlin. And, and we're, for putting in, we're putting into perspective in terms of budget, size of club, and the progress they've made. Fourth place was Hamburg. Just seeing. Wow. It, yeah. 
That is impressive. That's bad. So Hamburg, that's... Yeah. I don't know whether that says more about Hamburg or Paderborn, I'm afraid. But, yeah, but as someone who loves to watch the Bundesliga coverage on BT Sport, I will be doing so next season, following Paderborn and giving you regular match reports. And I can't wait to enjoy let's it. See, let's, see, let's even get an SC Paderborn shirt between us or each. Or say, go for it, Craig. Speaking of BT Sport, okay. they've lost the rights to the FA Cup. Yes, they have, but it, it's good news. It's very good news because all the FA Cup games are free to air. Yeah! So we've got to mention this doesn't come into place for a year Not or another two. Another year, 2020, 2020, 2021. So when uh, when the uh, break is for the... Oh, well, well, yeah, well, the break, really. I forget what I'm just saying. Break for... <laughs> well, I completely forgot about the World Cup of 2022. Oh, okay. Right, but yeah, I'll get the idea, though. Okay, that's... That, for, I think that's fantastic news because the amount of games I've not seen. Charlie. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely no, no. fantastic. Yeah, so the BBC why, and why ITV. did they just did they not want to stump up the cash or did they not make enough money out of it? They just I don't know. Don't don't know. Really no, I guess the are, BBC okay. coverage, as much as the final that we watched last weekend was a bit of disappointment. Yeah, it has really revived the the FA Cup in yeah. terms of its reputation with fans. The Friday night coverage of the yeah. first and second round in particular Definitely. with the lower league and non league sides is brilliant. I, 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 I think the coverage on I think the coverage on the Final score for FA Cup games. On the two o'clocks on Sunday. Yeah, on the Sunday. I think they were fantastic. We yeah. went to one of them last year, obviously, and we saw the yeah, report. <laughs> and, uh... and Charlie watched us on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He was at Christmas. No, but I like the fact that you don't. I've, I've only watched the games on BBC. You get a bit more in depth because you haven't got adverts every five minutes and all that sort of. I just think it's so much better. So obviously, ITV really. will have the adverts, but the most important thing is that all the games will be mm. free to air. You'll be able to watch them no matter what channels you can yeah. afford, as long as you can get a TV, obviously. Does this mean bring... if it's going on ITV, they're going to bring back Des Lyon? I'm pretty no, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Mark Pugh actually will probably do. Oh, oh well, but there'd be more Clive Tilsley. Jim Rosenthal back. That's what I want on there. But there'd be more um, Clive Tilsley back on our TV screens. <laughs> as long as they games. don't, as long as they don't get Andy Townsend back doing the commentary. <laughs> so, um, just little things. Like, obviously, like BBC always picks first. Who picks the big games? And that, but yes. it's going to be different this time. So, um, so the BBC will have the first and fourth picks of matches in the first. Third and fifth rounds. Okay. I will just pick the semi finals while ITV have the first and fourth picks of the second, fourth, plus the quarter finals. So a bit like they do with the Euros and the World Cup with the England games, yeah, where so they just they... take it in turns to pick them. So it's a lovely idea. It's good that they're sharing them. And as much as we talk about how, how much coverage, so say like the VARs with BT Sport, you'll never be able to get that on a public broadcasting service. No. However, it is very important that there is exposure for the game. So a bit like other sports are learning a lesson as well. Where golf used to be on the BBC, it got a huge amount of attention. Remember when I remember when I was growing up when the Ashes used to be on Channel Four and it used to just hundreds of people have come home and watch it after work. It was brilliant. But unfortunately, that seems to have gone in recent years. But the FA Cup doing us proud and bringing it back. Though I will miss the BT Sport. Don't mug off the cup adverts. I do <laughs> like those adverts. They were pretty good. Fair play to BT Sport for actually do, doing that. Um, really quickly, going back to non-league football, uh, there's a team in Mansfield called T- Traversal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you got it? I've seen this. No, you go for it. No, no, go for it. Go on. I saw go on. No, basically, I just they, they caused. I saw this about a year ago. I yeah, so it's not exactly that. a news story, but I think it's only sort of been picked up on social media. But um, I don't really know the background to it. But they've got the <laughs> they've got the Tesco trolley um, like shelter. As the roof for their away as end, as I believe it's called a trolley park. Well, trolley yeah. park, yeah. I think park is over exaggerated <laughs> a little bit. To be brutally honest, park. Um, so they've essentially just taken the plastic yeah. sides off and, and the metal bars, and yeah, and just given a roof. Which I think is well, why brilliant. spend you know why spend lots of money recycling and all of that. I just but if you if you get a chance, have a look at it on the internet. We, it's hilarious. We have to say the Tesco donated it's a fair play. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. One of the other things we talked a few months back about, uh, I think it was even Australia or America, where a team had used a shipping crate to build a stadium. That's yeah, right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. getting more popular sort of, now. These sort of ingenious solution, sorry, mm. where it doesn't cost a great deal is effective. We talk about the tiny amount of grant in terms yeah. of facilities that these non-league clubs get. What a brilliant way to do Definitely. it. And that's why the FA should not moan that ground green. Because no, that was absolutely genius. A couple of other quirky grounds. Uh, we've got Al Shamal. Oh, I've seen that. It's a castle, isn't it? And people say about your home ground being a fortress. Well, there's is because it's actually it inside a, a castle. So you yeah. can see it in a castle wall. I like that. Oh, and it's really finally, uh, Bursa Spore have got a crocodile as a ground. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen this. this I have like seen the, this. The concept for their new ground they're going to build. And one of the entrances is a mouth of a crocodile. Very well, good. you'll see the Qatar ones and one that looks very inappropriate. Yes, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no, so it. let's not worry about that. I think enough. we should have more bus shelters and Tesco trolley shelters as away ends for me. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to see more of them. Right. Um, can I talk about another former non-league player who's now not in the English non-leagues? 
And I want to talk about Jamie Day. So he's been a bit of a non-league journeyman. He came through at Arsenal, never made an appearance. Is he, was he at... Um, is it Stevenage or was he... Oh, that's Chris Day. Was he at no. Newport? He wasn't at Newport, I'm afraid, mate. Jamie he, Day? No. He was at Bournemouth when they were in the lower leagues. He then went to the likes of Dover, played loads of games for Welling, Graves Athletic, and then Welling again. So we- t- oh, Welling United. Welling United. Oh, sorry, I think they're Welling City. <laughs> so he took over in 2009 as player manager of Welling United at the age of 30. So he was obviously a natural leader. I think he was having a few troubles with injury, but he was still playing plenty of games. In that five years, he played 114 appearances that he was in charge. In his first season, despite having a, a first full season, I should say, despite having a five-point deduction, they finished in sixth place and just missed out on the playoffs. Obviously, had that been nowadays, they would have been in the playoffs. <laughs> the following season, they got to the playoffs, lost out in the final, and in the third year, he led them to the title and took them up to the National League. Now, he made a bit of a mistake. After his first full season in the National League, into his second one, he guided them to mid-table comfortably, and in his second one, he decided to leave for the temptation of the money of Ebbs Fleet United, who at the time were in the National League South, now have been promoted, are in the National League, and we've talked numerous times about the standoffs with the chairman this year. Yeah. Since then, he's had a bit more of an interesting time. He's been with Forest Green, Braintree, well in again, and then Gillingham and Barrow as a coach for assistant manager. But where did he go last year? <laughs> You said he's not in England anymore. Not in England. He's managing a national team. Oh, oh is it someone like... Um, is it conf- can not the one? Vatican or something like that, is no. it? Or no, no. Not Moldova? No. What? Are you going to give up now? Yeah. Oh, well, well, what continent are we going with? Uh, Asia. Asia? Asia? Oh, he's probably got something like... Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. An island, a very small island. Yeah. Not like Mauritius or somewhere? No. China. So, interestingly, smaller than that, interestingly, oh. he has managed... Or he's now manager. Delicious. Bangladesh. All right. Very good. Oh. So he took over. The reason this story's come yeah. up this week, he took over on the 20th of May last year and has just signed a new one-year deal. He's been managing both the first team and the under-23s to try <laughs> and help the youth for as well, which is brilliant. His assistant manager is another former uh, player in England's non-leagues, which is brilliant too. But it was quite interesting how he got the job because that obviously surfaced again yeah. this week as well. His agent was based in Australia. He'd known him from his time in England. And phoned him and said, oh, the Bangladesh job's about. Would you be interested in working abroad? Mm. And he said yes, thinking nothing of it. And the next thing he knew, he was asked to go and meet the president in London. <laughs> <laughs> so he met him, had an hour chat, and at the end, offered him the job. Yeah. And he said, yeah, why not? Only one slight problem. Oh, no. Hadn't told his wife of four kids. Four kids? <laughs> four kids. <laughs> wife and four to kids. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. And let's not forget, he's only what? 39 at this point so his uh, kids aren't exactly all yeah, adults, no, no, you know what I mean? adults yeah. so it was quite an interesting one he said his what? wife took it very well his yeah, wife has stayed in England but he obviously because it's an international side he can get that sort of yeah, three yeah, or four yeah. week break in between at certain points but he's been out in Bangladesh for a year now he's signed on for another year and it's just a wonderful story of we talk so often about English players particularly at lower levels not getting a chance yeah. in management because quite often like we've seen with Sol Campbell the top players are ending up in the lower leagues yeah. and everyone's getting pushed down a bit but mm. he's gone away, and a bit like we mentioned with David Robertson yeah, at Cashmere. Yeah, Braille Cashmere, yeah, yeah. He's just gone along, and he's doing a good job there. Yeah. So absolutely fair play to him. But is he doing a good job? He is doing a good job. His win ratio is above 40%, which for Bangladesh is excellent. Wow. So obviously they're a very small side. They, yeah. They've not always had a big footballing background, as you know, in that sort of region of Asia. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. cricket-oriented. And it's hard to get the fun. And a bit of pro, uh, pro kabaddi, sorry, which is another fantastic sport. Oh, brilliant. Sport. I love that sport. Basically professional tag. Unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely professional brilliant. tag rugby. Uh, have you ever seen that? Incredible sport. Incredible sport. And linking to Bangladesh, I just wanted to say the Cricket World Cup starts next week. Can't wait for it. Are you going to watch on catch-up, though? Are we allowed to talk about it or not? Um, I can't watch it because it's on Sky Sports, but I am going to one of the last ever group games, which is Afghanistan v West Indies. Ooh. And if West Indies don't get through, it will be Chris Gale's retirement party. So the self-proclaimed universe. Can I ask you an honest question really quick? I know it's a football podcast. Would you rather, for the sake of the game of cricket, the West Indies go through, or on a selfish part, would you rather them not be going through so you can see Chris Gale's last ever... I'm not I'm not too worried because from my T20 league watching I am a massive fan of the Afghanistan left leg spinners uh, leg spinners sorry they've got some brilliant spinners <laughs> so I'm looking forward to watching that as well so I don't really mind <laughs> back to football Craig you look amused uh, should we talk about Asamo Jian who's quite an enigmatic character at the best of times he's had an eventful week hasn't he yeah he's so obviously the African nations uh, careful ca- Craig. African couple of nations is coming up um, 
What met amusing more? He basically announced his retirement from international football. Oh no! What was amusing about this? Was uh, we, the reason for it? Yeah, it was basically he'd been stripped of the captaincy. So yeah. in a bit of a hissy fit, he the, the story develops. There's two parts to this. In a hissy fit, he basically retired. However, his retirement letter begins with the most bizarre quote to any retirement letter I, I imagine you're ever going to read. And I'm, I'm sure we'll now see it on thousands in the future. Yeah. So this is um, been re- it's, so his press statement. It, it says in big bold letters in, of an underlining. The decision to re- re- I can't even read that word. Recuse myself from the Afcon 2019 in Egypt and retire from the national team. And it begins with literally this: My mother once told me you cannot tout a decision you did not make as a betrayal because you have to expect it. I still do not understand that statement anyway. And it has, it has no bearing on the rest of the statement. <laughs> the rest of it then goes on to say like I cannot pretend to be happy. I'd rather hurt myself emotionally and psychologically, um, as over the years I have served with an open heart and given all to the best of my ability. In, in my quest to serve in our great nation, Ghana, I have represented the proud colours of our country in 10 major tournaments from the Olympics, World Cups and African Cups of Nations. In all, I would say that the years in, have been my proudest moments in my career as a captain under the coach Crazy Appiah. I stood solidly behind the coach in difficult times in Brazil and in some cases supported the endeavours of the team financially when the need, to, need arose to make sure um, of his tenure. And my captaincy would not suffer challenges and uh, to ride of assertion a Ghanaian coach could do it. I mean, it's just absolute rambling. Of, of, eventually, he gets to the point where he basically says, upon consultation with my friends and family as an active member of, and f- captain of the national team, it is the decision of the coaches to give the captaincy of the tournament to another player. While I am named in the squad for that tournament, I wish to remove myself from that tournament. I also wish to retire from the national team permanently, not pretending my presence would not fuel the purported undermining of the country having um, has been seen under my captaincy. Wow. I mean, it's just absolute gobbledygook. Wow. However, I thought that was the end of the story. But, but it was a, not. I did a bit more research this morning. He has now been put back in the provisional squad for he Ghana. Follow a conversation with who do you think, Craig? The president. The president of Ghana, yes, no less, has personally um, requested he come and see him. And is now. Right, let, let's, let's stop this because <laughs> we've said this before in the past. I mean, you're very unhappy at this. <laughs> we've said this before in the past. It's, politics should not be brought into football. No. Well, me and Charlie have said that. Well, you two have said this in the past. And yeah. This is taking the piss. <laughs> it is. He did make the squad. No, he, he oh, made he the did squad. make the squad. He made the squad. I mean, Andre Ayew has now been made captain. Oh, that's even worse. Let's <laughs> go back to Asimajan. Jesus Christ. So he did make what the squad. But the, the, the coach, Crazy Apple, just wanted to put, uh, give the captaincy. Because I think he's 33, going on 34 now. Yeah. So all of this, yeah, R- ridiculous. But there's a lot more to Asimo Gian's career than... The one He's a money-grabbing... <laughs> Careful. The one thing I would <laughs> say about that statement is I'd love to know if his mum asked him to put that line. I don't get that quote at the beginning. It's all about betraying I don't, I don't like, think she said it. Who starts a statement by writing a statement and then saying, I never understood that statement. <laughs> 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 what's, that going to do with, what's the point of that? <laughs> but yeah, but so however, that's, happy... That's, that's re- oh, no, he's not yeah. tired now. He's in the provisional squad. But... So we'll be watching him next month, won't we? Probably not, because he won't make the squad. No. Hey. Anyway, moving on to sad times, because Bangor City... Now, we, also, we've had points deductions. We, we've rambled on about points So this is the Welsh one, because there's, there's technically a couple of bangers in there. There's one in Northern Ireland as well. Carry on, sorry. The the, one, in yeah. the Welsh League. Yeah. So um, we've talked about deductions over the years, uh, oh, sorry, over the season, with obviously um, and points... That, uh, well, just so, fines and that shit. So many decisions being made off the pitch, politics running football. Yeah, just... um, However, uh, Bangor City of the Welsh uh, League uh, got deducted 42 How you... points. Well, and the thing, I mean, that's not even the start of the story. Last year, they got demoted from the top tier despite finishing in the European places. Because they didn't have yeah. a Welsh licence? They, they are, license yeah, something, like something ridiculous. They have the, the best or the biggest following in the Welsh League in terms of season ticket and average gate before that point. And it just seems like in a league that's already small, why would you keep throwing down your biggest dog? Yeah. And I mean, they, they've got history for it, the Welsh League. They did it with Lynetley Town, who only just got back to the top tier this year. They did it with them before. I know the Neath one was a little bit different, where Lee Trundle mm. went there and they were spending absolutely bucket loads of money. Yeah. He, he come out of that with a lot cleaner than what he should have done, Lee Trundle. I mean, they, that one seemed to be a bit more on the club side of it. Yeah. But with Lynetley first, now again with Bangor City, it just seems like they want to try and push them and down. 42 po- I mean, honestly, 42 points. I mean, aside from... Well, actually, I can't even think of any justifiable reason why 42 and points It's is. been quite okay. a good year for the Welsh League yeah. and the Welsh Cups. We talked a lot about Unisadu. We talked about Cambrian and Clydeck yeah. getting to the League Cup final. And that Cardiff yeah. Met, uh, they one of the first Met. university teams to play in Europe or something yeah. like that. So it was really League, yeah. And hopefully they'll be on S4C in the start of July and we'll yeah. be able to watch that. But 
it just seems like such a sad way to end mm. the season that yet again everything that's happened on the pitch now doesn't matter no no I agree I so agree. That technically there's 42 points they only got 42 points for the whole season how have they ran up to 42 <laughs> I wonder I where they know. got the number from <laughs> Uh, so like a quick debate? No. Okay, we're all going to do it anyway. No, uh, no <laughs> well, this is one that you said, Craig, actually, about sin bins and goalkeepers. Oh, yes. I mean, this for me, I take away Asimov Jan, this is probably the most ridiculous thing I've seen this week. So you, you sent this a thing, so obviously the sin bins... Yeah, sin bins take... What, uh, I don't know what step, step is coming Sin into. bins for, uh, from step five and normally pyramid down seven. to step seven. Oh, lower than that. Oh, right. Well, whatever. But obviously, so you're having to start to flesh out the rule a bit, yes. aren't they, and give you different. Oh, did, so did you know that it's going to be in the FA Vars? It's going to be in the FA Vars for it. Really? Yeah, yeah it's going to be in the FA Vars, yeah. I suppose, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. this Sorry. is the statement that you sent us, Craig. So, this is one of the various connotations of what one of the, the sim bin rules. So Sorry to interrupt, quick question. Where are they going to put the sim bin player at Wembley? That's a good question. That's a, well, it's like the same thing beyond that with a park. <laughs> well, no, but with Wembley, because it's set up for top elite football. It's not back. really prepared for that. A park, there's plenty of open space. Wembley, there's the stands and there's the pitch. I assume we'd just sit back in the dugout, really. Yeah, I okay. think so. Oh, no, no, it is, it is the dugout. It's anyway, the, most, oh, okay. the, the standout sort of thing from the recent literature that was given out about the sin bins is that one of the, the bullet points there was, in the case of a goalkeeper being sin binned, an outfield player must take over his position for the 10-minute period. Yeah. On completing his sin bin period, the goalkeeper must re-enter the field of play as an outfield player until which time there was a stoppage in play, enabling him to change position. So you could, like, something could go on, like, it's like basically kicking the ball out for, like, someone going down injured. It's, and just ruin, and that stops the flow of the well, game. That's exactly well, this point. is it, stopping yeah. the flow of the game. I've got a few points to make on this. There are, I'm not saying it's a, it's a majority, there are a number of keepers in non-league and professional football who, like me, wear a Gabal Kirai tracksuit. <laughs> happy <laughs> retirement, Honestly, Gabal. Happy, happy retirement. Gabal Kirai retired this week. It will be my next story before we finish off this ramble. Uh, and I don't quite understand how that's going to look on a, on a step five football yeah. pitch. At Wembley in the Vars final next year, there could be a goalkeeper who loves Gabal Kirai as much yeah. as I do, wearing the tracksuit, and you could have a goalkeeper who is an outfield player wearing odd socks and shorts because he's an he's a goalkeeper or he's an outfield player naturally and then you've also got the issue with the goalkeeper's kit can't be, clash with the outfield because that's going to be a fine short, as we worked out as a fine they're going to have the same <laughs> shorts and socks as the outfield players yeah. then which is absolutely crazy and then the outfield player who was the goalkeeper could be running around the fucking track soon well that's the thing then <laughs> you think about as well the changing over of like the shirts the would it not just be easier that, okay, he served this 10 minute period or whatever, next time the, the ball goes out of play, bring him on straight back in as, as a goalkeeper? Why do you have to faff around with the. If it's yeah, the goalkeeper, wait until the next time the ball comes out of play after yeah. 10 minutes and then just bring him on again. And I'll be honest, in my very limited experience with local football and stuff, goalkeepers aren't normally the ones you get booked for dissent anyway. Which hopefully will solve that problem. So, really, in theory, hopefully that's a fairly redundant, stupid bullet point because what? really. It's the outfield players you're trying to get, you know, trying to deter from, from doing this. I mean, there's one other point I want to make on this quite genuinely, which is, are we not going to see even more time wasting than what you've highlighted? Mm -hmm. In the sense that, let's say an outfield player has to go in goal, what's to stop a team saying to that outfield player, you're going to have cramp in 30 seconds, or you're going to be injured in 30 mm -hmm. seconds, and then the sub keeper comes on for him. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they just make two subs. And That's as soon true. as the goalkeeper and, uh, comes on outfield, if it's like 20 minutes to go in the match, definitely at a high level, the outfield player yeah. comes off, the sub keeper comes on. Mm -hmm. When the keeper comes back on, he gets replaced well, by Well, he's just got creative substitutions, isn't it? Because you've got no, the role of the No, you just literally bring on a, I would personally bring on another outfield player obviously just put another outfield player going goal until this ten, the goalkeeper's 10 minutes are up and then just swap over but really. you're talking like an FA Vars final with 20 minutes to go they're not playing an outfield player yeah. they'll get a sub keeper on it, it, do you know what's stupid about it is really all that's going to happen is the moment that goalkeeper's 10 minutes are up if your team's got the ball you're just going to boot it out for a throw as far as you can you know and, and I know it's set 5 obviously that's different because you've got ground but local football is just going to be booted into the next field why don't they change over the goalkeepers anyway because you might as well just cut out the middleman and just say look when he comes back on he goes straight back in goal like I, mean, I don't get it. There's, there's a lot of it to me that just reeks of stupidity. Yeah, people yeah. that haven't been on a football pitch. And, and for the poor, let, let's be honest here, for the poor bloody referees oh, who have yeah, got a police yeah, yeah. on 30, 40 quid a game, yeah, it's exactly. absolutely ridiculous. Crazy, crazy. Any more stories to finish off with? Um, I just want to finish off with a homage to <laughs> Gabor Kirai. <laughs> But let's be honest, this is an inspiration of yours. An it? inspiration of mine. Obviously, my, my attire for my whole He's your fucking hero. Life <laughs> has been based on Gabriel Karai's grey tracksuit. A brilliant goalkeeper at Palace. Him and Julian Sproni, the dream team of goalkeepers. And it's just a very, it was a very emotional week for me. But 
I just I just feel like I'm gonna have to take the poster down. Now. The poster. <laughs> <laughs> The, the PC wallpaper, everything's got to go, and I've got to find a new hero. So, if anyone wants to be a new hero, let me know if you wear a grey tracksuit in gold. I thought Quincy Rowe was your hero. He might be now. He's a contender. Oh, what a strike, Pamero! An unbelievable strike from the Frenchman! And now it is time for our unofficially sponsored by Noe Pamero Name the Matchday Squad. So, sponsor us now, eh? <laughs> sponsor us. It's probably the last one, because I think uh, between the three of us, we're probably going to bin this off. Um, but it's a good one. Do we know who the winner is? Well, yeah. So, Craig, how many points ahead are you at the minute? About 25. So, what I'm going to say is for this I'm one, just nine. Nine. the winner gets 10 points. So, that makes it a bit more interesting. Oh, <laughs> so it's, uh, I wonder how he came up with that. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I'm joking. No. If I'd have said eight, then he would have said nine. I did, yeah, <laughs> exactly. uh, so... Normally I pick a game that's quite topical, uh, etc. I know what you've been thinking this week, is he going to choose one of Noe Pamro? The answer is no. Thank um, God. But... I think the real question do... was, were well, you going to choose Charlton Sunderland? No, no, no. no. I thought it was unfair on you, Dan, because unfortunately you were maybe four or five years old when that game took place. I was, I was, I was butterfly. No, wasn't that? I was nine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think you were quite that early. But, anyway. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go back, because it was the FA Cup final the weekend just passed. Yeah. Now, I know before... <laughs> Offered. <laughs> last weekend I did uh, last week I did an FA Cup final I'm going to do another one because I want to test your memory because you both oh. said you researched the Arsenal versus Chelsea I didn't research it well then that. you're in a bit of trouble Craig no, uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do either okay well I thought you did and we're going back to 2002 4th of May you definitely said you did because it was when Arsenal were going to play Chelsea in the Europa League oh yeah but that was about four weeks ago well that's yeah. what I mean let's see how much you remember from I that I can't remember when two days so ago. it's obviously uh, a cracking game 2-0 to Arsenal yep. what's going to happen is you are going to name a player at a time obviously if you got this far into this I shouldn't even need to read this it's so on death. the screen um, I would have just said if you'd have picked the, the, the Arsenal Liverpool one the year before would have been flying but oh really yeah. that's yeah. Cool. I think have already done that I think done that well we're going to do this one now <laughs> uh, so yeah anyway so going back to 4th of May 2002 it was when the FA Cup still kicked off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon however was much better than this Saturday it was still class, during was the like team it was a referee was Mike Riley at the Millennium Stadium 73,000 people and Arsenal won 2 0 and how many subs did both teams make uh, both teams made 3 subs and I can confirm that this time out of 5 so it was only it's out of 5 yes good editing skills. some good names here uh, Very good. I think it's you to go first is it um, I is it me you? it doesn't matter but so anyway, what are we going to do Charlie Cue the music. Oh, thank fuck that music will be going as well. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm going to use it for future games. People would surely assume it's playing in the room to have that much of an effect on me. It's, not, it's, it's, not the, elephant, it's the elephant in the room. Um, uh, okay, so... It's, are you going first? Uh, I'll, I'll go, go first. first. On, um, oh God, let's start with... Let's start with the Arsenal's main man. It's only Ray Parler. Ray Parler started and finished that game and of course... Scored on the 70th minute. Uh, I would like to go for another Arsenal player, please. The Swede, Freddie Jumberg. Freddie Jumberg scored the second goal on the 80th minute. So that's the two easy scored. ones out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Chelsea's number 26, John Terry. Came on as a sub at half time, actually. So he didn't start, was booked after 75 minutes. The problem with the Chelsea team then is they had three brilliant strikers and it could have been two from three, couldn't it? That's going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to go for. Let's get the obvious one out of the way, shall we? Presuming that he actually did. No, no. Oh! I'm going for Arsenal goalkeeper, David Seaman. David Seaman obviously started and finished that game. He did, yes. He did. Uh, I'm going to go... In my mind, it's really... It's this really is when Ranieri was manager of Chelsea. He That's was. any sort of context. So Not I'm going to go with <laughs> Carlo Cudicini. Yeah. Carlo Cudicini started in goal for Chelsea, yes. So I'm not going to go for the Arsenal left back, but I don't think it's who it would have been. You don't? I don't think who you think it is. No, I, I think it's who I think it is. Well, I'm but pretty I'm sure, sure you think who you think it is, but I'm well, not sure. Let's just stop there, shall we? Do know. Um, <laughs> shall I go for the normal Arsenal captain? And the hope that he was there is uh, Patrick Vieira. Patrick Vieira wasn't captain that day, but no. he was not. I know who but he was did, But he did play, to, and he was booked after 26 minutes. He became minutes. captain the season after, didn't he? Yeah, Why because the actual captain, who's been asked as long as serve captain, was Tony Adams. Correct. Which was his retirement game, I think. Tony Adams did also... Games. I've got history for that. No, he's in that, yeah. Brilliant. He didn't play! Oh, I win! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said an Arsenal play, he got it wrong! <laughs> that, that puts me in a tight spot because I don't know which other Arsenal centre half to go for. Because that could be tricky out of two or three, couldn't it? Uh, so I'm not going to worry about that for now. 
the right back. I oh, think, I'm not going to. I don't know who to pick. I think the right back's easy enough, but again, I don't want to. I don't want to go out on an obvious one. <laughs> no, I think though. No, 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 no. Come on, think about that era. I, I think I know the centre back for Arsenal. I'm going to hazard a guess on on that. I'm going to. Chelsea has so many players. It is yeah, Chelsea team. Chelsea team's great. Look, Chelsea have got three strikers. Two of them will have played. I don't know which ones. Jimmy Floyd has to play. He played and came off after 68 minutes. Mm-hmm. So all three of them played. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Ida Good Johnson. He also played and was booked in the 91st minute. I'm going to assume, sorry, excuse my voice there. <laughs> the striker that came on was the legend of Gianfranco Zola. It was, he replaced Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck. Oh. Who, by the way, the following season, or was it the following season or the season before, the flick against Norwich? That oh, was yeah, the goals I've ever seen. Uh, I loved Zola, he was such a good oh. player. What's oh, player? It's one of those players that you just, even though it's against a rival, you just want to just love it. Yeah. You just love him regardless. Well, to be fair, Espe- I and he was on rent with rejects. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that about Logan Johnson as well. I used to love watching him play. So. Yeah, another cracking player. Hmm, okay, all right. William Gallas. William Gallas did play for Chelsea. Oh, 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 oh very good. That rules out Winston Bogart. <laughs> <laughs> Everything rules out. I had more of a chance than Winston Bogart. William Gallas played for Chelsea. I'll be honest, my eyes initially diverted to the Arsenal squad. I realised that was a bit later. When my uh, problem at fullbacks for Chelsea is there were. There's, there's so many positions where there's loads of options. Like Arsenal up front, it could be two from four or five. Dennis Burkamp. He played and came off after 72 minutes. <laughs> have you mentioned Sierra Marie? I can't confirm or deny that. I, I don't know if he was available for that. No, I think. No. I can't remember which one. I'm pretty sure Thierry Henry. Is that, is that the final answer? Yeah. He did, and he was substituted after 81 minutes as well. He definitely scored in the cup. So final. that leaves us two other Arsenal strikers, which means I've got two more names that I think we can go for. Go on. Or were they bringing on a midfielder holding out the game? Were they? <laughs> I'm between two Frenchmen. For Arsenal or Chelsea? For Arsenal. Oh, okay. I'm between two Frenchmen. I, I don't know. I'm thinking, why would Parler play if Pirates was available? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, part of that could be on the right. No, don't listen to it. Part of that could be on the right. Sylvain Wiltord. Sylvain Wiltord did play and was substituted after 89 minutes. Fantastic. Because the other one is injured. Sylvain Wiltord played because, did, wasn't it three days later where he sealed the... Yeah, I traffic? remember that. I yeah. believe you're missing three of the back four for Arsenal, but the rest of the... It's because there's so many options. The rest of the starting 11 you've got. I'm going gonna, gonna, to gonna go for Sol Campbell. Sol Campbell did start at centre-half. So you're missing the two fullbacks for Arsenal and their three subs. And Chelsea's still opposed to the team. Lauren. Lauren started a right back. Left back's hard because it could be either. Yeah. Oh no, I think you're thinking of the other one because they both went to Barcelona. But then again, the other guy could have gone. <laughs> Nigel Winterberg got to Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nigel Winterberg. Um, was he not a West Ham by that point, really? He was, yeah. Still a living man. I can't think Chelsea left. Oh yeah, Chelsea left back one or I'm two. Gonna go for, I'm going to go for a shot in the dark. I'm going to go for Marcel Desailly. He was captain at then, played 90 minutes, Marcel Desai. So that was my next one. So do you know what? I'm going to go for it. Mario Melchior. Yeah, that's, he what, did. that's the guy. That's the guy he was substituted head. after 76 minutes. That's a, that's a, whatever you call it, rabbit in the head. <sighs> Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard played 90 oh, minutes that yeah, day. Yeah, it's first year there, wasn't it? Yeah. Central midfield for Chelsea, I just can't think of it. it I'll, I'll be amazed if both of you get it. If either one of you get it. It's incredible, incredible. I remember on Chelsea's left back. Again, it's a straight shoot between one of two. I think it's one of two. It could be. It could be the legend that was that was a nickname for one of our Sunday League colleagues. Yeah, that's what I had in my head. But it could but be I the other one who already him. joined after that. So I can't think one. of the one who joined afterwards. You can't think of it. No. Oh God! No, I know. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, oh. is Cody going as well? <laughs> for Arsenal, we've got all three subs. No, you need to get all three subs. Yeah, you Oh, I think I got one. I'm going to go for one. Yeah. Because both strikers came off. Is it impacting? It's too risky. It's so risky. We're going to have to be on time now. You've got it. Yeah. I'm going to go for. And this is a a very shot in the dark. Edu. He came on after (laughs) 72 minutes. (laughs) Edu came on after 72 minutes for Dennis Bergkamp. Oh, wow. So that was just after Arsenal scored their first goal. Mind you, I haven't done the sub-striker that came on. So I've got the sub-striker as well. Yeah, I kind of think it's the obvious. Great. It is the obvious, I mean, we've been doing this for 15 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And for those listening, it's only been about three. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm going to go for Emmanuel Petit. That's what I didn't think you'd get. There's the one central midfield. He started saying you deserve that. Frank Lampard. So you've got three of the back four. 
got the goal. Sorry, so for Arsenal, you've got everyone apart from their left back and yeah. two subs. Chelsea, you've got the goalkeeper, three of the back four, two centre midfielders, two centre yeah, forwards, back and back. John Terry come on as a oh, sub. We're not, and so no, we've got one, 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 one more Chelsea. No, I'm not, I'm not risking that. Do you know what? I'm going to go for the striker, the obvious one. It might be right or not. Carlo. Carlo came yeah, on yeah, after 81 right, minutes. Right, he always comes on against Chelsea. Thierry Henry. I don't know how many times he's been in this guest. Uh, sorry, Nathan. Well, there's another man you haven't named. He's been in this a lot as well. He's not Nathan Carlo. Okay, so, oh, so I, either, I'm, you've even got a gamble on Arsenal. So I'm going to gamble. I'm going to gamble. So what one Arsenal side, one Chelsea side? I thought we'd done one three Arsenal side. No, right? two. Adrian and Carly. I'm going to take a hit on the Chelsea left back. Go for it. Celestine Babiaro. Celestine Babiaro did start a left back and played for 45 minutes. He was substituted for John Terry. Oh. That what kind of formation did they play in? I think Gallas went left back at half time. Must have gone, yeah. Um, so, oh yeah, must have, yeah, oh yeah, he would have. So I've either got a gamble on Arsenal's left back or the left winger for Chelsea. Or they've they got, got both of them. Do you still have a name for the right winger? What, for Chelsea? For Chelsea. Do you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. Shot in the dark. Goran Stanic. Goran Stanic did not play. No! Unfortunately. <laughs> the, the left midfield is a genius move, but well, no, unfortunately Goran Stanic did not play. Craig. Oh, dear. I should have gone for the Arsenal left back. I, I, I've got this guy in my head, and I don't know what season he joined, but I'm going to go for Bolo Sendon. He did come on after 76 Oh, that was lucky. Can I, can I ask a quick question? Did Giamvani Van Bronckhorst feature? No. I'll go, I'll go for we'll it. go for it, because I, 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 I was going to say uh, Van Bronckhorst. That was, it's got to be Cole or Silvino, then. Epic, epic oh, game. Silvino. Epic, epic game of... Uh, in, that's what I thought you meant by going to Barcelona. Couldn't Franny Jeffers that come on? So, no, it was the season after. Arsenal squad for that day. David Seaman. Lauren, Sol Campbell, Tony Adams, Ashley Cole. Oh, it's the fucking obvious. It's the obvious one, yeah. Sylvan Wiltord, Ray Parler, Patrick Vieira, Freddie Jumberg, Dennis Bergkamp, Sierra and Ree. Coming off the bench that day, Edu, Kanu and Martin Keown. Oh, my God. Would you like to have a guess at the other two subs you didn't call? Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon. And... Alex Manager? Goalkeeper. Richard no. Wright. Richard Wright. Richard Wright, oh, yeah. Go okay, on. Chelsea squad that day. I'm not even... Rami Chaban. <laughs> this is brilliant. And the left and field is fantastic, right. In goal, Carlo Cudicini. Is it that Enrique De Lucas? No. Nope. Right back, Mario Melchior. Or Melchior, however you say it. Uh, William Gallas, Marcel Desailly, Celestine Babiara at left back. Right midfield, Jesper Gronkjaer. Oh, what a name. <laughs> what a name. Oh, no. Uh, Centre midfield, Frank Lampard, Emmanuel Petit. This is brilliant. Left midfield, Graham Lasso. Oh, we got both. We got done. We got done we by got that. We got done by both. Uh, it's been so long trying to avoid I both. I thought it was going to be Sam Dallabonna. <laughs> <laughs> Massimo Ambrosini was there. <laughs> Ambrosini. <laughs> they had so many. Uh, Ida Good Johnson, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank. Come off the bench that day, you had obviously John Terry, Bolo Zenden, is brilliant, pretty much every single one of these that we've done, and Gianfranco Zola. Not coming off the bench that day, Ed De Huy, and the eventual Watford manager, whose name I can't say very well. Savicio Jokanovic. That's the one. Wow. And that concludes that. That, that went on for much longer. That was than we probably our, our yeah. toughest one yet, and we done. It was so a very well. good one. It was, it was really a great episode. That threw you because you you. I can we, see we, why you thought it was either him or Babiaro, and obviously then that throws the whole thing out, doesn't it? And yeah, the fact that, we got that was done our by Ashley Cole because he was thinking of Van Bronckhorst to me, Sylvania. Yeah, we <laughs> 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 would have got done. Unbelievable. And once again, um, I win. And, and to be fair, that, that, that was it, a good effort. It was football that was oh, the winner. Yeah, yeah. Despite Freddie and Berg. So in a new season, whenever that starts, new game. New game. Cody will be the host of it. It'll be me against Charlie. Let's not bank on that just yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for today's ramble. It's the final one of the season. We will be doing our predictions for, uh, from the season. Obviously, just gone. We will review it and see how far we got. Not competition another competition another competition uh, we didn't get close don't forget to like share and subscribe you can follow us on twitter at honestfootballfree and we'll see you next time mm-hmm.